Welcome to our demonstration of enhanced maintenance controls and visibility for the quarterly infrastructure maintenance on Gen2 Exadata Cloud at customer. During this demonstration, we'll use the OCI console to show the following infrastructure maintenance use cases. First, we will demonstrate editing maintenance preferences to be applied to future maintenance, including new controls available for the maintenance method and enabling a custom action timeout. Second, we will demonstrate modifying the same controls for an already scheduled maintenance. And finally, we will demonstrate controls and visibility available while a maintenance is in progress. All right, first, we're going to navigate to our Exadata Cloud at Customer infrastructure. Once we pick our infrastructure, It'll take us to the infrastructure details page. What we'll notice when we are working with preferences for our infrastructure maintenance that has yet to be scheduled, we have a new button called Edit Maintenance Preferences. We can click on this button and it'll bring up uh, a page to be able to edit the preferences for maintenance that has yet to be scheduled. Um, there is the option to pick a maintenance method between the default of rolling, meaning the maintenance is done one database server at a time, right? Restarting each one of those database servers and those underlying VMs, but keeping um, all but this the uh, server that's that's having the maintenance applied um, online um, and cycling through those uh, sequentially one at a time. Uh, we also now have this ability to enable a custom action before performing maintenance on a database server. By checking that box, this will give the ability to enter a custom action timeout in minutes. And during that uh, time, what, what will happen is prior to the maintenance for each individual database server, uh, the automated maintenance will wait for the configured number of minutes uh, before that time period expires, the timeout expires, uh, and the maintenance will then proceed on that database server. Uh, that's the case for rolling maintenance. The custom action timeout can also be used even in a non-rolling maintenance. And in that case, uh, it will wait for the configured amount of time prior to starting the maintenance for uh, the database servers, which will be done in, in parallel across all servers. Uh, there is also still the ability to uh, provide the maintenance schedule that uh, was already available uh, in the maintenance pre preferences, selecting uh, the different maintenance months um, uh, and the various quarters to uh, apply this quarterly maintenance. Um, once everything is configured the way uh, you like it, the changes can be saved. Um, next, we're going to demonstrate how to edit the maintenance method and the custom action timeout, as well as view target versions and estimated maintenance time detail for a maintenance that is already scheduled. Once a maintenance, the next maintenance has been scheduled, we'll notice in the next maintenance uh, field here under the, the maintenance section and in the infrastructure details, uh, the date and time for that next scheduled maintenance. And by clicking the view button, uh, we're able to see the details about that scheduled maintenance um, with some more information, including things like the target database server version, the target storage server version, and some links uh, that we can get out to my Oracle Sport to, to get release notes and other information uh, on those versions. Uh, it'll show the scheduled start time as well as this total estimated maintenance time, which we'll come back to here in, uh, in a minute. Uh, we also have the option to edit the configuration for this maintenance run. And so this will edit the maintenance that's already scheduled and you'll see similar type capabilities that we saw in the maintenance preferences, including the ability to alter this maintenance uh, between rolling and non-rolling. Um, keep in mind that if we do uh, select non-rolling, right, the system will incur a full downtime as uh, those database servers and the storage servers will then be updated um, in parallel. If we do decide to change to a non-rolling, you'll also notice a, a strong confirmation. Like so we'll come up asking for to input the name of the, the infrastructure um, into the field in order to confirm and save that changes just to uh, be able to confirm that 
the un there's the understanding that the full downtime will be incurred. Um, we're, we're not going to, to do that for now. We're going to keep with the rolling maintenance. Uh, we also can make adjustments into the custom action timeout time. Uh, maybe I wanted to reduce that time a little bit. I can do that. Um, this will uh, save those changes for this, again, this maintenance run, and we'll notice that custom action timeout is changed. We also have the ability on uh, to see an estimated maintenance time for our maintenance uh, and a little more details. Uh, for a rolling maintenance, we can bring up the dialog to be able to see uh, the different components that are involved in the maintenance and the estimated time for each. So we'll get the total estimated maintenance time, uh, the time broken up by database servers, um, storage servers, and the network switches that goes through the maintenance. Um, and the rolling maintenance right, components are updated in this sequence. Uh, for the database server, we get the, the order uh, that the maintenance will be performed on each um, for each database server. Uh, we'll see the estimated time for that maintenance and also if there's a custom action timeout configured the the time for that uh, timeout which all rolls up in the the total estimated maintenance time and those for the database servers uh, we'll also see uh, for each database server the number of vms that will be impacted so that depends on the the number of vm clusters and if the um, those VM clusters are uh, spread out across each of the different uh, database server hosts. Uh, we can also then click on the show details and that will give us each individual VM name um, that resides on that database server um, as well as their corresponding VM cluster name. All right, that information will go ahead and close that dialog and everything then is ready for the scheduled maintenance to begin. Um, I will also just real quickly also highlight, we mentioned the target server versions. One thing I missed here on the infrastructure details is we'll see the current um, versions for the Exadata software that is already um, on the, uh, the infrastructure, both for the database servers as well as the storage servers. Uh, so that's the current and then what we saw in the next maintenance, um, of course, is then the target server version that is to be applied. Sometimes we may see the word latest in here. Um, when a maintenance run is scheduled, if the, the next available release of the, the Exadata images has not yet uh, been made available, that may show latest and then it will be updated prior to the maintenance run once, um, once that release is, is there and available. Our last demonstration will show how to edit the custom action timeout as well as resume the maintenance before the timeout expires while the maintenance is actually in progress. Once the maintenance begins, the Exadata infrastructure goes into a maintenance in progress status. The next maintenance field also shows in progress. Clicking on the view button opens the details page for the maintenance. This page also shows the maintenance in progress and now contains some new information. While the maintenance is waiting for the custom action timeout, a banner is displayed stating when the maintenance will resume. The banner has two buttons. The extend custom action timeout button allows increasing the timeout in 30 minute blocks up to the allowed maximum of 120 minutes. After extending, the info block shows the extended time before the maintenance will resume. The Resume Maintenance Now button will resume the maintenance immediately without waiting for the timeout. We'll go ahead and click the button, and then after a few seconds, the info block disappears and the maintenance on the next database server begins. At the bottom of the page, the maintenance component shows the current component being updated, and the component status shows either waiting, meaning the maintenance is currently waiting for the custom action timeout, or it shows maintenance in progress. When the maintenance is in progress, click the Edit Maintenance Run button to modify the custom action timeout for those database servers that have yet to be updated. The only configuration that may be modified on this screen while the maintenance is in progress is the custom action timeout. We'll go ahead and cancel without making any changes and then click on the Exadata infrastructure to return to the infrastructure details. While the maintenance is running, progress may be monitored by viewing the associated work request. 
click on the work request in the resource menu on the left side and then click on the apply XSCC Exadata infrastructure patch work request. The log messages in the work request show each step in the process, including when each component starts and ends. This includes the custom action weight and uh, the patching for each individual database server. We'll now fast forward as the maintenance progresses. Returning to the maintenance details page, we'll notice at the bottom that the current maintenance component is DB Server 4 and the maintenance is waiting for the custom action timeout. The total estimated maintenance time shows the estimated time still remaining. Clicking on the view link next to the total estimated maintenance time, the side panel opens and we see that the first three database servers have now completed and database server four is yet to begin. Please note that the estimated time for each DB server progresses to zero as it completes. The custom action timeout will always show the currently configured timeout. The total database server's estimated time shows the estimated time still remaining, taking into account both the remaining custom action timeout periods as well as the remaining database servers. Closing the panel and then returning to the infrastructure details screen, we fast forward to the time that the maintenance is completed. At this point, the Exadata infrastructure will go back to an active state and the version information located at the bottom right of the infrastructure information is updated to show the current database server and storage server versions. Clicking on the work requests, the work request shows as succeeded, and we see the start and end log messages for each component as well as for the overall maintenance. Going back to the infrastructure details, we see that the next maintenance shows the system is up to date, and clicking on the view link, we can navigate to the maintenance history where the succeeded maintenance is displayed. Thank you for watching our demonstration of the enhanced quarterly infrastructure maintenance controls for Gen 2 Exadata Cloud customer.